There were not many books written in the 1600s, but this one made a mark. Martin Blockwitz was a physician, and he wrote this uh, 300-page tome on elderberries and all the magical things these berries could do. Tuberculosis, asthma, everything would be cured by them. Well, most of this, of course, was bogus, but interestingly enough, he also had some comments in there about the common cold and, and what today we would interpret as infectious diseases. And you know what? There actually is something to this. The elderberry bush, a very attractive bush, and uh, grows these berries. These are, of course, the dried version. And uh, they have actually been put to the test for infectious diseases. And we have studies about elderberry supplementation, in terms of the, the common cold, uh, antiviral activity, uh, about what happens you know, when you uh, do in vitro, there's laboratory studies with these things. So there is evidence that is accumulating that syrups and various kind of extracts made from elderberry can be a treatment for symptoms of, of the common cold and maybe even the flu. There's, of course, no evidence that it will prevent the flu or that it will be effective in curing it, but it may be effective in treating some of the symptoms. And there is even scientific rationale for what happens here. It turns out that ingesting um, elderberry products triggers the release of cytokines, and these are chemicals that immune cells use to communicate with each other. It also turns out that there are compounds in elderberry, probably flavanols, that interfere with the way that the virus binds to a cell that it is ready to infect. And the virus has to hang on to a cell before it climbs into it and causes an infection. And it seems that elderberries can prevent that from happening. Of course, we have the usual problem with natural health products about standardization. How do we know what is really in there? There are all kinds of products out there on the market. There are elderberry syrups that are liquids. There, there are pills made from elderberry. And of course, there are the berries themselves. Well, it seems that most of the research is done on a standardized version called Sambucol, uh, which was uh, basically first uh, put together in Israel. And this is the version that most of the studies have used. And it's pretty interesting that they've shown that it can reduce the symptoms of, of the cold or the flu. Now, of course, you need the flu shot if you want to have a good chance at, at preventing the flu. This is not going to do that. But should the cold or the flu strike, I, I think it may be worthwhile to give this a try. Of course, we can't really know which version, you know, whether you should be eating the dried berries uh, or which syrup one should take. That's still up in the air. It needs a lot of further research and, of course, Almost every scientific study, including these, ends with the comment, further research is needed. But there's something else that needs to be mentioned about elderberries, and that is like apple seeds and apricot bits, they contain a compound that can release cyanide when ingested. Now, of course, small amounts would not be a concern, but if someone is making juice out of elderberries and gets the leaves and the twigs in there as well, that can result in toxicity. And there was a, a case back in the 1980s when a number of people who had gathered wild elderberries and made a juice of them ended up in hospital with cyanide poisoning. They all survived, but they had some indigestion problems. And there, finally, there's a fascinating story about a Columbia University professor who learned a lesson the hard way. Uh, she was into natural products and she wanted to protect herself against the flu by making elderberry juice. She didn't realize the cyanide content, and she probably got some twigs and leaves in there together with the berries. The berry seeds also have some cyanide, but not very much. It's mostly the, the branches and the leaves that contain the cyanide. And uh, she ended up having to write an email to her class saying that class had to be canceled because she developed uh, stomach problems, which she traced to drinking this elderberry juice, and she didn't realize that had she heated it, the cyanide would, of course, have gone into the air. So she learned a, a very valuable lesson that natural does not equal to safe. And her university, Columbia University, gives a number of excellent courses on chemistry, 
where they teach you about natural products and the relationship to synthetic ones, and that natural does not necessarily mean safe and effective. Maybe she should enroll in one of those courses.